The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy? Better sleep? Blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and just $10 a month. And get moving with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today, $1 down and just $10 a month. Deal extended through September 21st. Sign up today. See club for details. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy with tons of equipment. Join for $1 down and just $10 a month. Deal extended through September 21st. Sign up today. It's glow time. See club for details. Some people don't understand why you've already busted out the sweaters. They may raise a brow at keeping scarecrows out year-round, but you just go ahead. Let them stare, because you eat, sleep, and drink pumpkin at Dunkin'. So sip your classic spiced and iced $3 medium pumpkin spice signature latte, or try the bold pumpkin cream cold brew, an ultra-smooth brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam. Also $3 for a medium. All so you can fall harder. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. From Asmacore Studios near Detroit, Michigan, oh, man. it's the Weedsman Podcast. I have no idea what's going on. And now, you have smoked yourself retarded. Here are the Weedsmen. You want to get hot? Well, we got one less queen than the last time we met. That was then. One less queen? One less queen in the world. One less monarch. Not really. She yeah. was replaced already. Right, yeah. They they had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> so should we act surprised a 96-year-old woman died like the rest of the world? Or I like, Well, look, I, I get that she was loved by a lot of people. I get that she was hated by a lot of people. Um, outpourings of grief? Like, come on. 96? 96, yeah. Rule the country? Uh, but did she? Well, yeah. Lived a posh life is what hasn't I'm that, saying. Hasn't that monarchy been symbolic for like the last uh, oh. half century? Well, certainly. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, like, you get to put that on your resume. I right. rule the country. You can't take that away from like, her. Isn't she, She's a queen. I think if you really get down, like, uh, in, on paper, isn't she just like the head of the church in England or something like that? Like, the actual power she has or had. Um, like, isn't that all there? Uh, isn't that all they have power over? I anymore? guess, like you could talk. I think of them. I think of the royalty more as like an uncancelable Kardashians. You know, you can't you can't cancel them because it's in the bloodline, right? Mm-hmm. They can, you know, have That's all true. the controversy and all that stuff, and people fall all over everything they do, and even in this country for some reason. And, and, and what are they? I mean, we're free. Canada's sure. free. No, no. India's free. No. Australia's no. free. Check. What, what check. The, what the what the fuck are they the monarchs of? Well, themselves. Like the yeah. well, there's it's great. It's uh the UK, the United oh, yeah. Kingdoms, right? Yeah, Wales, Ireland, Northern yeah. Ireland, not yeah. Ireland. And oh. Ireland is not part of the UK. Northern I it's it's uh I forget how it goes. Yeah, but yeah, it's Wales, England obviously, and Northern Ireland. Some other part. I'm missing something, aren't I? I was never great at geography. No, but it's, I, it's all that's over there. But I learned that recently, so I know for sure that, like... I think I heard that before, but, yeah, it's very confusing. How do you, like, still... Ha- it's like Alaska, right? Like, the U.S. is this area, and then there's a whole bunch of Canada, and then there's the U.S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, they have their own they have their own Alaska oh, over uh- there. Wow. Right? <laughs> There's be some people angry at us. I know <laughs> Why? Who we left out. Who did we leave out? Scotland. Oh, the Scot that's right. <laughs> the dad that's... from So You Married an Axe Murderer would be super pissed. <laughs> so would all the guys from Train Spotting. Oh, uh, they'd understand because they know they're, that they're high, they don't care. They, well they're high and also or they dead. they know that being Scottish is shite. Man, it's shite being it's Scottish. Shite. You can't even be colonized by yeah. proper wankers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, would say people at the English. I don't. Yeah. I think they're wankers. <laughs> yeah. We, on the other hand, are colonized by wankers. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's my heritage. I'm surprised you forgot that one. <laughs> well. Scotch-Irish, mostly Scotch. So I don't know. Oh, I guess there's part of me that's mourning, too, or happy. I don't know. I'm still... And I don't understand, like, the reverence in this country for him. Like, I wanna, you know how this country was founded, right? Like, yeah. a, bunch of pe- yeah. a bunch of people came on a boat to get away from that. That's why we're all here. Well... Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of creepy. It's, it's like stalking your ex on Facebook. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like being in an abusive relationship and then like stalking that person online. Right. <laughs> it's like, like I know a group. Why doesn't he love me anymore? I know a group of guys two hundred fifty years ago have been like, "The queen is dead. Good fucker." No, yeah. well, there's plenty of people on Twitter over the weekend <laughs> oh, yeah. that were like, "Good fucker." I mean, like. It's just the, the only issue I take with those people is like just open a history book. She all that shit you're bitching at her about. She ended a lot of it. Right, right. It, not on her watch, and also again figurehead. Right. Yeah. She didn't colonize shit. Yeah, and a, and a lot of yeah, and a lot of most of the, the countries I named her gained their independence under her. Right. She was. They want to be free. She was like, yeah, good, be free. Yep. That you're well. All I think it was just you're more trouble than you're worth. Yeah. There was many people who had it. was more than that. I mean, like, whoever's, pet, whatever your pet grievance is, you had some way to tie it to the death of the queen, you know? And that's what, and that's what people do. That's what all this outrage is about, right. right? They're upset about, like, usually one specific issue, and they find a way to tie current events to that. Like, if you can't see this current situation as this, then you're crazy. Okay, right. call me crazy. Fit me for a straight jacket. Set me up for the old fifty one fifty. So out with the old, in with the old. <laughs> right. It's <just> like, <laughs> like, oh yeah, a new day is coming. What will what will Charles's reign be? I'm like, uh, how old is that fucker? <laughs> yeah, he's seventy three. He ain't making it to ninety six. He liked to party. Uh, he liked to party. He's a dude. Yeah. He's an English dude. Yeah. Like, come on, man. You're telling like. The only reason he's this old is because he's fucking royalty and he's probably having, like, you know, baby stem cells pumped into his blood every day. Mm-hmm. Right, he's, he's got a blood boy. You see, that he's been looking pretty rough, like, in recent he's history. 73! No, but I mean, like, there's been some episodes where, like, whoa, what happened? Like, he looked like he was dying. Like he well, had- he is one of those guys that all of a sudden, like, he was middle-aged and he was old. Yeah. Like there was no like in between. He went from middle age to old guy in like a year. That's a, you know those are the kind of guys that we grew up with, isn't it? Like doesn't it seem like that was what guys were guys they is before they hit their thirties they looked just like average mm-hmm. old dude. Yeah, and by the time they hit their sixties they looked fucking dead. Yeah, <laughs> that used to be dudes. Dudes are different. I'm just saying. Trust me, I've had this conversation with a few people last week. I, you too, probably we're to that age now. When people tell you their age and it's the same age as you, and you're like, "Holy shit! I hope I don't fucking look like that." <laughs> we are the same age. Are you serious? We're aging all right. We're aging all right. I think you and me here. I guess, but again, right. like I said, I see other people and talk to them. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. I hope my self perception is not that far off. Part of it is that they act old too, though. You know, you got to stay young at heart. I watched uh, I watched some of that Beavis and Butthead. Oh, I'm going to... I now have... As luck would have it, yesterday, I now apparently have Paramount Plus for free for a year because I have T-Mobile. Oh, yeah. So I'll be getting on my Beavis and Butthead here shortly. I wonder... I'm surprised it doesn't get you access to Showtime, too. Yeah. Well, I'm, so far for having my cell phone, I now have Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus, and Paramount Plus. Plus free to like this time next year. The bundles. Just for owning my phone. Um, I haven't really. So I, yeah, I got a subscription and they bundled it. It was like, I think I paid eight bucks to get like an ad supported version of Paramount with Showtime for a month. So I mean, that, that's like less than getting Showtime. And then I read today that they're thinking about just folding it all in because Showtime, come on, it's not doing great. People will yeah, this, they'll dip in for a month, they'll fucking binge billions. 
Weeds and Dexter were a long fucking time ago. The, yeah, bye bye. Those days are gone. Yeah. Like I know you're like you had the number two spot for a long time right behind HBO when it came to those premiere shows. And you Showtime did help usher in this new golden age of television as we're calling it, with, you know, really just more I say more mature, but when I say more mature, what I really mean is not more swear words, more tits, more dicks. I mean more like mature plots that were actually like, you know, well thought out. Wasn't the affair diet. on Showtime? The affair was on Showtime. Oh, God, that's... Sh- that. uh, more Tierney. That, that whole character, like... Yeah. She's just, she's just a big bummer for like seven <laughs> seasons. Shit. Like, oh my, I can see why you're divorced. It's a, it's a rough role. <laughs> it, is, it is. No wonder you're divorced. You're a <laughs> giant bummer for like most of a decade. That was such a weird show. Like, it's a great... I love more Tierney. I, uh, Dominic, uh, what's his name from The Wire? Uh, I forget the... What was the, the woman that he has an affair with? The, that actress has been in like so much shit. And she's kind of a chameleon. She kind of like blends into her roles. But it, really strong cast, but just like didn't go anywhere. Oh, and Pacey, right? From Dawson's Creek. Yes. Yeah, he was in it. I, oh, yeah. I don't know what Josh Jackson was just like. He was like... He had the market cornered on playing the dick husband for he, quite some time. He has the market covered on cock. <laughs> right. <laughs> Joshua Jackson's been playing cock since he, That's true since, since Dawson's before, Creek Since fucking Dawson's Creek <laughs> That guy That's gets true, cucked Dawson was always getting the chicks he wanted yeah. <laughs> Hey, he made a career out of being a beta male you know? Right With, Hey, As long as the checks are cash I didn't, I didn't get any money right. so. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so Beavis and Butthead is great it really is like I. It's just the same, you know, <laughs> the same but better. That's that has it's, been the review from most of my friends. They're like, it's this. It, it's they've just updated. Yeah, it. They haven't lost a step it's, on the show. It's, it's my judge, and there's really just not. There's no better way to describe it than that. You know, I know. I think early on when we heard that they were rebooting it, there was a rumor, and it might have been spread for fun by the Mike Judge or the people making it, but they were saying, oh, this is going to be like an updated, like we follow Yeah, like they were supposed to be adults and they had kids and millennials or some shit. Right, 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 right. And obviously it's not that. They just, much. they did the comic book thing or what The Simpsons does now, like the, the, the shifting time frame, like, you know, Never mind, you've been teenagers for 30 years. Right. Bart Simpson's been in fourth grade since 1989. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, they're still in high school. It's Lisa just, Simpson's so fucking smart. She's they're, still in second in, grade. they're in high school now, and they're just, you know, mm-hmm. they're the same age. Like I said, I heard instead of videos, they're watching TikTok videos. Yeah. They're watching... And they do, there's a, at least one episode, they do like a special, like, peer into the future, and they show, like, Beavis and Butthead in the future, and it's a great episode, too. They're at, Beavis is on unemployment, and that's what they're using to pay for beer and cigarettes and everything. <laughs> and that, the unemployment runs out. Well, Butthead don't have a fucking social security number, too. And I think, I think Butthead's on disability, and he's oh, just out of money. Th- there it is. Yeah. And so he goes, well, go down to the unemployment place, you dumbass, and, like, get some more money. <laughs> and so Beavis goes down there, and, of course, he's gotten, like, no qualifications like, and everything. Money. And, yeah, and, I mean, you can you could imagine how this plays out, knowing the characters. But they, he has no qualifications, so they're like, well, you can be an in-home care uh, person then, you know. You help out people who are needy, who are on disability, and... <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> he sent him to Butthead's house, and he's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, you're my slave now. <laughs> like, he's got him doing everything. <laughs> and not only that, oh, man. once he gets his money from working, he takes his money and goes and spends it on beer and shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have to watch this. Yeah, it's it really is great. 
Like I watched the first episode and I'm like, okay, maybe I just really wanted to like this. And I watched another one and I'm like, no, this is good. Yeah. This is like just as good as ever. You ever notice Mike Judge seems to be uncancelable? But he's, no one's gone after him. You know, uh, part of it is that he seems to well he he holds on to the properties that uh, that have made him a lot of money mm-hmm. and doesn't you know necessarily have like relationships with studios. It doesn't seem. You know, it's just like, oh, here, I've got an idea for a movie. Shop it I'm around. Like judge. You want it or not. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, like, when you control your own shit, you just can't be canceled. You know, the, the lo- people can be canceled when they have bosses that you can rat them out to. Who are you going to rat out? Mike Judge or Adam Carolla or... Mm. Uh, um, well, like Joe, the point, Joe Rogan. The point Adam's been making for the last couple of years is true. Like, yeah. if you don't apologize, they move on. Yeah. Like, once you've, once you've bended your knee and, oh, I'm so sorry, that's when the fucking mob just pounces yeah. on you. Whereas you do apologize, and then it's another news cycle of your yeah. apology, and another round of everybody analyzing your apology and telling you why it wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And then you rewrite your apology and then you have to like come to see the light again. It's just, it's never going to fucking end. You say, fuck you, I'm not apologizing. Like, Bill Burr does that shit too. They've tried to come for Bill Burr like three times. You don't apologize and it's like, oh, I can't, can you believe he didn't apologize? Well, let's get somebody else. They'll apologize, yeah, like, and then we can keep this thing going, and then I can get clout, and then I can feel like a superior person. Bill Burr's another one. They keep trying, and he keeps saying, fuck you. No, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Like, what okay. am I apologizing for? That you can't take a joke? Yeah, I mean, like, Bill Burr, these guys, he might run into the occasional, like, quote-unquote, woke club owner or something that doesn't want to book him. He's like, all right, I'll go to the next closest place, and I'll go to your competition, and... Now I'll tell you what. Say though, goodbye when the, to your night. <laughs> when the the Gina Carano thing was going on, and first time I ever heard Bill tap dance on his podcast. Oh, he likes being uh, on Star Wars, huh? Well, yeah, he's got two kids now. <laughs> yeah, and he likes that Star Wars money. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is most ambiguous I've ever heard him fucking be. <laughs> he's trying to. He was trying to be like the situation is bullshit, but dancing that line of like, I got this Disney job. Yeah, and I got kids. Um, I think the situation was bullshit like most of these situations are, but I just don't have a lot of sympathy for Gina Carano because she seems like an insufferable asshole and, uh, she just handled it badly, you know? Like, yeah, she should have just shut the fuck up. You know, well, like, look, I've been fight, I was fired from Guitar Center over a stupid, uh, conflict with an employee mm-hmm. that I was in the right. And I didn't do what he said I did, and I didn't say what he said I did, but I did lose my shit, and I did handle it badly. Yeah. Right? And ultimately, that's, you know, whether I got fired because he said that I called him something I didn't, or because as a manager, I can't handle an employee. It's a moot mm-hmm. point. Right? I didn't handle my shit. And Gina Carano didn't handle her shit. You know, she didn't, she didn't do the non-apology or the apology she tried to she tried to argue nuance with idiots. Yeah. And she's not also too she's like not all that how, smart or so. How really? How many celebrities <laughs> I'm just need saying. to figure out there needs to be someone between you and your social media. Yeah. Like it, it, 10 years ago we were still learning this, right? In 2022, how is that not a thing? You need a filter. Yeah. You need someone to be like Hey, maybe let's not post that. Yeah, you need somebody like the that can act as your hand, like in Game of Thrones. Somebody our former right president aid. did not have. Who Someone can, to be like, yeah. hey, you sure you want to send that? Yeah, who can put their hand on your shoulder and say, think about how that sounds for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read this aloud and tell me if you still want to send it. <laughs> the hand comes down. Is it necessary to bring up Nazis in this conversation? <laughs> or any. Or any, unless you're or any talking, conversation, unless you're talking not about Nazis or World War Two, about World War Two. <laughs> yeah, do we really need to bring up the Nazis? <laughs> it's, it's just a Hitler icon with him shrugging his shoulders. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure you want to do this? <laughs> so, well, Apple TV, you had mentioned earlier, they were uh, one of the big winners at the Emmys last yeah, night. The huh? Emmys happened, and I apparently didn't notice till you fucking mentioned it. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Apple TV and HBO, which are two of my favorite streamers. I think, uh, well, I mean, Apple TV is still, whether you're getting it for free with uh, a subscription or uh, uh, your iPad or, or phone or something, or even just paying for it outright, it's still worth it. I mean, five bucks, no ads, and they've got award winning programming, right? You and know what? I mean- I don't it's hard to sidetrack. fucking argue with that. I don't want to sidetrack the conversation here too much. But, oh, God. And I feel like we probably have this every fucking year. The Emmys have come out. If you are a network, how do you think you're relevant at this point? I mean, this shit yeah. started in 1999 when The Sopranos started winning everything. Like, how many, like, Netflix is winning Oscars at this point. I mean, it's, it, uh, how many, how many years is it going to be like, you mentioned two streaming. Ne- I feel like the last five years we're talking about streaming networks are just sweeping the Emmys. Yeah. If you are NBC, CBS, or ABC, how the f- or Fox, how do you think you're still relevant at this point? Well, right. So apparently, uh, let's see. Apple T. So the big winners were Apple TV, Netflix, of course, uh, HBO, Prime Video got some awards. What's that? Hulu. That's right. Everyone forgets Amazon won an Oscar. That Casey Affleck movie a few years ago, yep. that was an Amazon movie. And then uh, it says in here, I'm from this story, uh, notable shows that were shut out include uh, Better Call Saul. So AMC's show, which again, it's not even network. That's just like, you know, basic cable. Uh, and that still didn't make the cut. And it's a great show. It really is a great show. As good as that show is, People are not subscribing to cable for that show. They're just waiting for it to pop up on Netflix. Yeah. You know? They're just going to do it. Well, because it's one thing to say, oh, I'll, I'll drop 15, maybe 20 bucks on a, a subscription for a month and get to binge watch all of a show. It's another thing to say, I'll drop 45 to $65 so I can get one channel out of 500 that's going to show one show that I want to watch. I'm doing that right now <laughs> for the next four to five months. Wait, wait that's an NFL yeah, package, for, though, right? That's, yeah, but I'm, I have Sling yeah, right now, yeah. so I can get the NFL Network oh, and Red yeah, Zone yeah. Okay. and ESPN. Yep. And then it's fucking... Since they the don't, Super Bowl's so, done... See? So NFL package is still tied to cable? Yeah, I still... Trust me, man. When I'm are they, they going to break like, off? What, why the fuck do I still need a yeah. cable provider? Why can't I just buy? Why can't I just get my drugs right from you, NFL? How much is the add-on for the cable? What do you pay per month? I'm paying. I could be paying thirty-five, but to get all the sports channels, I'm paying fifty, and then I'm paying. An, I'm paying sixty-one bucks. Wait, but I'm just wondering how much extra the NFL package is. Oh, the sports eleven bucks. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, imagine if they just went. Standalone with a twelve dollar monthly service for all the football you can watch. Or charge me twenty bucks a month. They could, exactly. Yeah, people would pay it. Uh, yeah, I'm paying sixty for. Yeah. My, I, I would. I would pay up. I would pay sixty just for your channel. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch any of that other shit on Sling. Right. It's just an extra layer to go through to get to what you want. You know what I'm put on. You know what I'm do that when I come home drunk and I want to think about what's on. T- uh, right. What's on. Uh, but you know what? That's what Pluto and Tubi and all these free ad based streamers are for. Well, fuck, paying sixty bucks, I'm gonna fucking surf through. It. Oh well, yeah. sure, yeah. But I'm saying you don't even need it for that. Yeah. You know, you know what's good when you come home drunk and or high and and just want to watch whatever is Pluto because they've got you know like the Love Boat channel and I Fantasy have found Island myself shit. in a few situations recently. Where like watch some Three's Company. Where it's like TV. Do you just make the decision for me, please? Yeah. Can we go back to how it was? Where you just tell me what's on and I pick. Yeah. <laughs> like I was watching some bullshit the other day, and my girlfriend's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm fucking channel surfing. Like it's 1999, baby." Yeah. Look at me. I'm letting the TV decide what's on. Yeah. I don't have to think right now. And when there's a commercial, I change the channel. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't give a fuck what happens on the other end. No. I move. I stick and move. 
Because if I care, I can go back and fucking DVR yeah. that bitch and then watch it on the DVR. Yep. And I got Skinamax on last. <laughs> so I can real quick check in and just, oh, any tits yet? Skinamax is still a thing. <laughs> I don't know if they do like the adult programming. I mean, I can get hardcore porno- <coughs> pornography in my hand right now. The, you're still playing titty movies at midnight? Right, because, I mean, Cinemax, I don't I don't know how it works. Like, I think a lot of their stuff has gotten folded into HBO. I don't even know if they're a standalone service anymore. Right? Come to think about it, when's the last time? I, I think it's the first time I've heard the name Cinemax in quite some time. Yeah, because the last show that they had that anybody gave a fuck about was... Oh god, I'm forgetting the name of it. It was like it was an ex-con who gets who uh hides in a small town posing as the sheriff, Banshee. And that's on HBO Max now, which is not a bad watch. It's a nice little it's pretty actiony little uh TV show too. But yeah, uh so anyway, we were going to Better Call Saul got that, that didn't get any awards. So I'm not even seeing, let's see uh yeah. So then here, uh, as last year's streaming platforms dominated the enemies over linear TV. Linear? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, with the major networks taking just three prime time Emmys combined. That's for the networks. And what even won from the networks? Some bullshit we never heard of? Like technical Emmys? Best set design. Uh, let's see. So, best comedy series is Ted Lasso. That's Apple. Jason Sudeikis. Is it a comedy? Uh, yeah. I think it's real funny. I like it. Uh, Jason Sudeikis gets best actor. Again? Didn't he get it last year, too? Cause, yeah, because last year, because remember, weren't people, uh, yeah, because remember people were making fun of him last year? Because he was in like a, he was dressed like a homeless person because he was on Zoom or some shit? Um,. I remember oh, yeah. Jason. I remember for some reason. I remember Jason Sudeikis' hoodie was trending last year. Or I think it had to do with his Emmy speech. I like. Uh, so I guess nobody is wearing masks at this thing, except for one person, Bill Hader. And you know, I don't. I don't know why he was wearing a mask. I don't know what the. I don't know what the call was i don't know what the testing was like for an event like this i imagine it was probably pretty strict i don't know maybe he was uh thinking about the current guidelines maybe he was just around somebody who tested positive right right maybe there is like a a maybe situation where like i tested positive i'm cleared to go to the amenities but you know i just i had a close (laughs) friend or family member test positive who know who the fuck knows well the new guidelines Except for, you know who does know, besides Bill Hader, Bev Katz Rosenbaum, whoever the fuck that is on Twitter, she knows. She knows it's because Bill Hader's a good person and the rest of the people are evil. Okay. She tweets, Bill Hader, brackets, who should have won all the awards he was nominated for. He got fucking, what do you want? <laughs> uh, was the only person wearing a mask at last night's Emmys. We stand a safe king resisting peer pressure in the year 2022. The CDC has come out and said, yes. unless they are N95 or K95 masks, they are bullshit. Well, so I guess it is a KN95 mask that he was wearing. Yeah, so he was. He was. And again, if you think about the new guidelines. It's uh, if you remember if you're around, they change it. If you if you were exposed, you no longer you could still uh, go out to the public. You just have to wear a mask for five days. He could have been around someone who just got a positive result. Yeah. No, it's because he resists peer pressure, right? Because in that room of heroes, he is the heroiest. So I don't know. Like I remember when resisting peer pressure was not wearing a mask. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, remember, remember when the other side was saying, like, all oh, you people wearing masks, why don't you resist the peer pressure and think for yourself, sheeple? Yeah. Well, so, and now, is this, does this woman not have access to the numbers? Like, it, 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 haven't we entered into the endemic a few months ago? Yeah. 
And it, do you not understand how Hollywood, like, it's, it seems like that's all we've really been talking about during the pandemic is like, how are our shows still happening, right? And yeah. we hear about all the testing and the separation of people and these small groups. I mean, we saw it. We saw all these productions come out where you're like, why is there no more than two or three people in any scene in any of these shows? Right. You know, like a they've lot got of soliloquies lately. They got this shit. Like, you don't think that everybody that was going to the Emmys had to provide some sort of test to get in that bill. But no, you know, Bill Hader, and he, he was doing it because it was the right thing to do, God damn it. I still see people walking down the street by themselves or in their cars by themselves wearing masks. and just like, In their cars driving around with yeah. the mask on. I love it. <laughs> Like, you do, what, do you get a buzz? You like I mean, you like getting short oxygen? Again, but you know what? Yeah, I, I try not to judge either way. Because, look, I, we should just accept that <clears throat> there's certain situations where, whether it helps or not, people feel more comfortable with the mask. Maybe it's a signal thing. Maybe it helps them just be like, you know, I'm trying to like stay away from people, not get them sick with whatever, COVID or mm-hmm. any kind of communicable disease. And you don't know the circumstance. Maybe the person I saw driving down the street with their mask on had a baby in back that they were taking care of. It was their niece or something. Who the f- who knows? You don't know the situation. So whether the person is wearing a mask or no mask, and whether that's odd because everybody else around is wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, whatever the fucking situation is, you don't know it. You don't fucking know. And it's just a mask. And it doesn't fucking matter why they, why they wear it or why they don't wear it, I do know or whatever. Bill Hader's a hero. I mean, this is like, at this point, this is not like, people's lives are at risk. This is like freaking out about people not wearing socks with the shoes on. Like, I can't, how could you do that? How can you just walk around? Those aren't even boat shoes. Like, <laughs> what are you really getting upset about? And where's the peer pressure coming? Like, the, Anyway. You could argue Get in the room that Bill Hader is this in. This is a weed podcast. The, pil- <laughs> the peer pressure would be to wear the mask in the room that Bill Hader is in. Last time I checked, yeah. entertainment pro mask. I, yeah, I know. I, right. Which is why I'm saying they, uh, I'm sure they tested. And either way, like, what do you fucking care? You weren't there. No one you loved was there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I do. And remember last year, Seth Rogen was freaking out that they were going to kill Eugene Levy. And also, like, if he's if he's like, you know, the hero of the night, then why aren't you talking about this as a super spreader event, Hollywood's Emmy super spreader event? Yeah. Or do we not talk about no, super spreader thing, remember- events because every time that we've talked about them, we've been able to actually point to one and go, "Oh, there it is." Or every time that we said this is going to be a super spreader event. It wasn't? Yeah. Well, people caught COVID. Yeah, they caught COVID. They I mean, ca- they're, remember, catching, they're catching this shit everywhere. Do you remember Seth Rogen's freak out at last year's Emmys? Like, how he, he was talking, like, he didn't think it was okay how everybody was together and all this. And he's like, we're going to kill Eugene Levy. Yeah. The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net. ChristopherMedia.net. The Weedsman Podcast. Well, so the the big controversy this year, though, really isn't the mask. It's not Bill Hader's mask. It was Jimmy Kimmel because what apparently, well, there was some bit that he did where uh, I guess it would. There was a prior bit that happened before this incident, right? So he was doing a bit with somebody where he ends up on the on the floor, right, just laying down on the floor for whatever reason. But in true Letterman style, it's not. You don't just do a joke. You do the joke. And then you do it again, and you do it a third time, right? And he's a big Letterman fan. And so when the next, when, you know, they do their bits and then they do the next award. And when the next person accepted their award and approached the stage, Jimmy Kimmel's still there on the floor in the same spot <laughs> while this person is doing their, their, uh, acceptance speech, which seems to have gone over really well. The the person who accepting their award was uh, very gracious about the situation, and everyone found it amusing. And that was it. No big deal, except for 
apparently when you go to Twitter right after, because the person accepting their award was Quinta Brunson, a black woman. And of course, Jimmy Kimmel would, would pick this particular moment to try and upstage somebody because it was a black woman, right? That was the thinking. Again, like Bill Hader, we peered into their mind and magically pulled out their thoughts of Jimmy Kimmel laying on the stage going, I'm going to show this black bitch what's up. I mean, you're not, could, you're not going to take comedy away from white dudes. I'm going to lay on the floor in front of you. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel is a known right ring racist, so. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if, if you actually asked, uh, I believe, Kinta, if you actually asked her, which they did, uh, how she felt about the situation. She knows Jimmy. She thought it was funny. She didn't really understand the whole thing, but she wasn't upset about it. So if she's not upset, how can you be upset? Right. What are you upset about? We're, we're, it's a society you're upset because that- you saw somebody who should be upset, and you're now you're mad because they're not mad? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the Bill Maher rule, man. You you are not allowed to be more upset than the person it happened to. Right. Uh, she went on to gush about her friend, admitting that after Jimmy watched Abbott Elementary, the show that she won. Oh, for, okay, that that chick. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, comedian. So she gets it. Uh, she's a stand-up again, comedian. Again, yes, she's a, she's a comedian. She's funny. She rolled with it. Uh, what, he told what did she win. Uh. I'm guessing best supporting because Gene Smart won for best comedic lead, so she must be she must have gotten best female supporting. Or maybe, but she's like, but she's the star of her show. Well, maybe racism. newcomer. <laughs> what can I say? Like she's the lead. Well, she like, like the show's about her. I only right, watched right. Like three episodes, but uh, I don't know. I haven't watched any of it, so it's. I thought it was more of like an ensemble cast type of show. Oh, it is, but as far like yeah. If 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 it's the office, she's Michael Scott. Oh, okay. Like it follows her right. mostly. Like she's the main at least the episodes I watch, she's the main narrator. Oh, she won for writing. Oh, okay. She won for be- uh, outstanding writing on a comedy series. I mean, it got season 2, so it must be good. It's probably I've been go hearing back a lot and of revisit it. Is that uh is that is that a streamer show or is that NBC like regular uh Yes. Prime time. It's both. It's ABC. Oh, it's so, ABC. So you can find it on Hulu. Oh, okay. I'll have to investigate further. Yeah, Gene Smart won for best lead. Gene Smart is just fantastic. Supporting actor went to Brett Goldstein, who plays Roy Kent. Fuck off. I <laughs> like I really hope like he should have just went up onto the stage, looked at everyone, just said, Fuck off. <laughs> Gave him two fingers up and walked off. <laughs> and said, peace him out of here. Well, no, it would be two fingers this way would be peace. Two f- reverse it and it's up yours. Oh, that's like the British. English. Like, Ugh, yeah. Uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph won for Abbott Elementary, mm-hmm. best supporting actress in a comedy series. Yeah, she's the grizzled veteran in Abbott, Abbott Elementary. Oh, okay. Nathan Lane won for supporting. Uh, not, for uh, for uh, only murders, yeah. yep. Um, not a big fan of season two. Like I couldn't get through it. Really? Yeah. Not doing it for me. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I Got to give it another shot. I finished season one, like two episodes away. Lori Metcalf was for a, for guest actress. She was in Hacks. She played uh, a bus driver called Weed. And she was she was actually quite funny, but she was just on for one episode. She got fired. She's pretty good at playing WT. Yeah, that's pretty much what she was doing. <laughs> uh, directing Ted Lasso, Abbott Elementary. Wait, oh, what so did Bill Lawrence for? won. Oh no, what happened? Wait, directing of what? What did I say? Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso directing in a comedy series. Uh, M. J. Delaney. No. Oh. So not Bill Lawrence. Who's Bill Lawrence? He's the creator of the whole thing. He did Scrubs, Spin oh, City. Oh, okay, okay. Cougar Town. Oh, Cougar Town wasn't bad. That was a fun show. That was Bill Lawrence. Yeah. 
I forgot about that show. That's all right. They had um, if you're a Scrubs fan, there's a lot of Scrubs Easter eggs in it. Is there? Oh yeah. That was so the Cougars were Courtney Cox, uh, Busy Phillips. Yes. And wasn't there one other? I forget. Yes. Oh oh oh. No, it was wasn't it uh, Scrubs alumni? Wasn't it the um, the one doctor, the female doctor on Scrubs? Sarah Chalk. No. I can't. Krista Miller, maybe? Oh, I got to look this up. (laughs) Krista Miller. Yeah. Bill Lawrence's wife. Oh, that's his wife? Mm -hmm. She's so fucking hot. She is just amazing. Five. I'm up to like, yeah, there's like half a dozen Scrubs people in this cast. Oh, on on Cougar Town? Mm Mm-hmm. On the drama side, Secession won. Outstanding, uh, outstanding drama. I've heard it just keeps being badass. Lee Jun Jae won for Squid Games and as lead actor. Yeah, Secession. Is, oh, yeah, I uh, forgot Squid Game was the thing. I watched one episode, went, oh, I get it, and then I had no interest in watching any more of it. Watched one episode, went, all right, classism, got it. Zendaya won for. Uh, female lead, Matthew McFadden. Oh, as Tom Wamsbent. Wamsgan. I can't say it's a, Wams, Wamsgams. Wamsgan. It's W. I don't think I've ever seen it spelled. W A M B S G A N S. Yeah. Wamsgans. He is hilarious. <clears throat> mm hmm. He is so funny. And him And he's actually English, so when you see him interviewed regularly, it's Get like, the fuck yeah, out. He's an English guy. He does he does a great American accent mm-hmm. and he's he has got it fucking down. Like honestly, the scenes between him and the cousin, what's his name? Greg. Him him and cousin Greg are my team now. Like those two forever. I would Does that watch, anything else? I would or- I would watch a whole... I've seen a... Or has he parlayed Cousin Greg into doing the Uber Eats commercials? Oh, I think yes. I don't. I haven't seen the commercials, but I would imagine yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know him from anything else before. Yeah. I want to say I've seen him pop up like, oh, yeah, it's Cousin Greg. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, he wasn't known for anything. But yeah, he's just... Uh, well, they did, you know, uh, I think they kind of got that from Veep. Like, we need a tall, gangly guy to hang out. And be weird, right? And because uh, that worked for oh, me. Oh, Silicon Valley had Josh, or what was his name? Uh, Big Head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I called him. I called that guy Baghetti, by Baghetti. Yeah, I, just, I called like, that guy by both of his names on two different shows because he was Josh <laughs> on uh, uh, Marin when he was Mark Marin's oh, assistant. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the guy that uh, is helping him clean the dead rodent from under his house, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Talking about his daddy issues. Yeah. White Lotus got some uh, awards for limited series. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I watched the first half of that. I forgot to watch the second half. First half, not bad. I said, we thought it was be a giant piece of shit. Pretty we funny. apparently were in the minority. Yeah. Apparently, the word of mouth on that is it is great. It's it's <clears throat> legitimately funny. I was surprised I mean, at how the, funny it was. The previews I saw it made me not want to see it. Yeah. No, it has some uh, it has some legit jokes in it. But I mean, on paper, something with Andy Sandberg and John Mulaney sounds like it could work. Michael Keaton got an award for his role as uh, Doctor Phoenix in Dope Sick. Oh. Uh, another show where I watched the first episode and said, yeah, I get it, but I also know where this goes. A lot of people get addicted to a lot of pills, so yeah. what are we doing here? <laughs> I know the end of this story already. And Amanda Set- Seyf- Seyfried, I can never say her, Seyfried her name right. Say- is it Seyfried? Seyfried. Seyfried? 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 <laughs> Uh, as Elizabeth Holmes in The Dropout. Ah, yes. Did you watch that? No, but I know the story. I did <clears throat> not care for it. 
Um, she plays a, a very frantic character. What is well, the story? I think they made this. Well, for my opinion, they made the fucking movie too quick. There's, there's it's still ending. Oh, really? She's still in court. Yeah. <laughs> what was? I forget what what it's about though. Uh, she claimed she basically she defrauded. It, it's a whole story about fraud. She claimed that she came up uh, with this. Um, like a service or something, or a machine where you could put your blood into it and it could, you know, figure oh. out everything that's wrong with you and all this and that. And yeah, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she, like, sold it to, like, Walgreens or something. Like, yeah, you were going to be able to walk into the drugstore and get your blood ran. Yeah. Yeah. I re- yeah, because I, I didn't put it on. My girlfriend was watching it, and I was like, what's this? And... 20 minutes later, I was like, this is a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if this is real or not. This, this is really bad. And I'm surprised she got an award at all because, I don't know, I thought her acting was just like completely over the top. And I think she was like, is, is the woman she's playing supposed to have like mental problems or something? It's, or are they supposed to have a deep voice? Yeah. No, I don't know. Like, she didn't seem mentally stable. And I'm like, uh, it seems like maybe they're just trying to, like, rewrite current history, <laughs> current events. What? As, like... I mean, they take creative liberties and they make <laughs> movies? As, like, oh, she's just crazy, right? She just, She's just really crazy and really passionate and just really wanted this. And we're going to have sympathy for it. And, like, you fucking... You're part of the problem that we have with our medical system right now. Like, I know it's just one example of, like, one device, but, like, this fraud is rampant in our medical system. So, didn't really also have much, you know, I, I didn't have much interest in sticking around to see her somehow made out to be the hero of the story, you know? Or even... Oh, she's not the hero of the story. Or even, like, try and apologize for why she, you know, is not heroic. Because it's just, you know, it's just another fucking greedy-ass person. Mm-hmm. You know, what, and what drives her? Fucking money. So she's putting people's lives at risk for money. Anyway, also not a great actress. So yeah. I'm just not really impressed by her. So in some weed news for this week. Reefers? Uh, you know, a lot of story about, still a lot of stories about crime and cannabis. Right? And the LA Times actually had a big story that was uh, the reality, as they call it, of legal weed in in uh in California uh saying that the times investigated the times investigation finds a the law triggered a surge in illegal cannabis on a scale California has never before witnessed uh saying rogue cultivation centers like the Mount Shasta Vista now engulf rural com- communities scattered across the state as far afield as the Mojave Desert the steep mountains in the north north coast and the high deserts <clears throat> and timberlands of the Sierra Nevada. That's very poetic and uh, paints a very nice picture. But wasn't there always weed all over California? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and have we had this conversation a thousand times? The black market California might be a little bit smaller if you weren't trying to fucking gouge the citizen for every fucking dime. Like exactly. I said, I in Oakland, I bought a the the price on the pen said 55 or on the cartridge said $55. Actual price? Yeah, they told me 80 something when they gave me my total. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Wait, what?" And they're like, "Yeah, taxes." Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Got to pay the man. Yeah, which is why like if you're a resident, you'd go once, go, "What the fuck?" and then you'd go and find a black market dealer. You you know, find a friend or somebody who could hook you up. Find the right deal in Michigan. You can get like four cartridges for $80. Yeah, I, I refuse to pay the LA Times money to read the story. So I'm reading the highlights from Twitter. <laughs> Residents in these places describe living in fear next to heavily armed camps. Criminal enterprises operate with near impunity, leaving... Pr- leasing private land and rapidly building out complexes of as many as 100 greenhouses. So I'm hearing creating infrastructure and jobs continue. (laughs) Police are overwhelmed. Raids rip out plants and snare low-wage laborers while those responsible 
some operating with money from overseas, remain untouched by the law, hidden behind straw buyers and fake names on leases. Yeah. I'm sure these are the only agricultural setups in California where low-wage illegal migrant workers work. You are not the only person to point this out. Yeah. And it's, you know, that was one of the most popular responses to this is interesting how this story could be written about a lot of different industries, but isn't. Yeah. It's just weed that's a problem well, all of a sudden. Regular farming industry. Yeah. None of, none of this shit happens like the illegal grows, it, you know, it, illegal labor, people living in fear. Yeah. Illegal migrants only work for cannabis farms. I also saw a story about how black market weed is still the buyer's choice in Hawaii, uh, which doesn't surprise me at all because Hawaii is another state that has uh, very high taxes. And uh, well, they only have medical, too. They only have medical. Yeah. You know, and it's just fucking everywhere, right? Everyone's got weed in Hawaii. Everybody. Oh, I've had a friend. Uh, he he went for his tenth anniversary, and he went for his honeymoon. When are you looking for it? People are like, "Hey, want to buy weed?" Mm, yeah. Like the first time well, was it because they went and got a tattoo on their honeymoon? Fucking, it, it, it was either walking in or out of the tattoo shop. wasn't even trying to find it. <laughs> Someone's like, "Hey, you want some weed?" Yeah, I want some weed. State report estimates that. Only about 20% of the marijuana sold in Hawaii last year comes from local marijuana dispensaries and blames market structure and regulation for driving consumers to buy from illegal growers and sellers. Yeah, if you have a legal way and an illegal way, but the legal way, it's a pain in the fucking ass, and the illegal way, it's not a pain in the fucking ass, which one are you going to do? Yeah. Because in Michigan, guess what? I have the legal way versus the non-legal way. And in Michigan, the legal way is less of a pain in the fucking ass. So guess which way I do? Exactly. Yeah. I can just go to the store when I'm out of weed on my terms. Go, hey, more weed, please. And they go, here you go. I don't have to fucking wait for anybody. I don't have to get the runaround. I don't have to get, no, man, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Nine hours later. None of that. But apparently in Hawaii, it's still easier to do that. Yeah, I, people just don't understand how... I, forget that we're talking about a drug. Look at the numbers, look at tax. Like, what would you do if it was $2 to buy a can of Coke in a gas station and they charged you, uh, you know, a sugar tax of a dollar and so you paid three bucks total and there is a guy outside selling them out of a cooler, ice cold, for a buck fifty. What would you do? Hey, man. Everyone would buy from the guy out front. They would. Do, they just would. Three dollars and get two Cokes. Even though that guy's selling illegally, not paying taxes, he's, it's, it's just a no-brainer. It's economics. It, it, it's, yeah. And that is the free market. <laughs> it, there's, an, there's another story. This one is from uh, News Advocate, which is uh, apparently in North Dakota. But the story is from the AP, and it really reads like a, an opinion piece, but I didn't know that AP did opinion pieces. So I think this is just a very opinionated news story. Everyone does opinion pieces now, my friend. And I, So the headline is, medical marijuana would see decline if pot legalized. Yeah, no shit. Legalizing rec recreational pot in North Dakota could cut the number of people who are registered to use the drug as medicine by at least 80%. Due to access to bigger quantities and more varied products, health officials said on Monday. Really? See, in Michigan, and I'm about to renew my card for the third time since it's become right. legal. But, but in Michigan, we have essentially the same regulations. It's just you pay less tax. So you're just, you're buying a discount card, essentially. Yeah. Because you can get all, no. I can get the same shit as you can get. There's True. no special medical products, right? There used to be, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. It used to lead to more variety, but yeah, the last couple of years, no, it doesn't. Now it's the same shit, just you're paying less tax. Yeah, and so the the right the author of the story is, is framing this like the state's going to lose a lot of tax money because all these people are not going to buy medical. Well, they're going to buy recreational. It's going to have a tax on it, dumb shit. Right. 
He says, medical pot is taxed at the state's 5% sales tax rate. That's pretty fucking low. Plus, plus local taxes. Recreational marijuana would be taxed at the same rate. Okay. How you... Uh, is, so trying to figure out how they're losing money. So, so follow this. Wall, who is... Uh, wait. Medical marijuana division director Jason Wall... So in South Dakota. So Wall told a legislative panel on Monday that North Dakota could expect $1.3 million in revenue in the next two-year budget cycle from application and registration fees from manufacturing businesses and dispensaries, which would cover the cost of state oversight. Wall said the state tax department had not calculated the amount that could come from recreational pot sales because the product cost and level of sales is unknown at present. Okay, let me help you out. It would be more. Yeah. It would be more. It would be a lot more. You have <laughs> how many models to go off of? So you're going to not- argue against something because it's going to cost tax money from one area, even if it does bring in more tax money in another area. Just say you don't like weed. Just... Just promise me, like, don't run a business. Right? Yeah. Just stay in politics. That's clearly where you belong. <laughs> yeah. Just say you don't like weed. Yeah. I mean, what this really just sounds like is, you know, oh, keep it at bay, right? We're fine with the medical, all right? If we have to have it, but then, you know, we can keep it regulated. We can keep it small. But recreational means hippies just pouring out of every corner, people blazing down the street. You know, every van is going to look like fucking Cheech and Chong with guys rolling three foot doobies in them. That's what re- that's what recreational marijuana does to your town. The sales of green shirts and brown bell bottoms are going to yeah. go way up. People are going to think Great Danes are talking to them. Uh, the other day, I was just walking down the street and a hacky sack contest broke out. <laughs> Why never? My monocle fell out. Yeah, calm down. You're fucking North Dakota. And uh, lastly, before we get out of here, just a brief update on Biden and the situation on the uh, national legalization of or illegalization of weed, as it still stands. Um, if you're hoping that he's going to do something, uh, the White House has said, we're not doing shit until after the midterms. And so, see, and I've read several things that said, hello, White House. Would you like people to show up for the midterms? Right. This would be a fucking home run. Fucking stupid. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid that they're not even going to talk about Stop it. Stop throwing out all these divisive issues. There's states out there that'll have it on the ballot. Use that to your advantage. Yeah. You fucking wimp. Are you, are you fucking serious? But they're so... Got, the Democrats have become cocksure in their winnings. And they look at the Republicans as being in disarray. But man... I'm telling you, they can snap together real quick. Sure can. The, de- the 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 Republicans still know how to get their shit together and get everybody on the same page. Democrats can't do that. They're all strutting around like proud cats, but there's still a bunch of cats that can't be herded. Look at the Mar-a-Lago raid, right? Yeah. Mike Pence, who obviously there is no love lost between Mike and his former boss since the election. Mike Pence went his on His former to, boss who uh, basically incited a crowd to try and hang yeah. his ass. Talk mad shit about him. Mike Pence yes. is on TV going, this is some bullshit. Yep. <sighs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they need to be pulling out all the stops. Like, yeah, I get it. Biden's on a big win streak, right? His polling numbers are up. Gas prices are down. Inflation is starting to chip away. You know, job numbers are looking good. It's looking good for Democrats. But this is, first of all, historically where you lose it. Mm -hmm. So stop being, stop letting your eyes glaze over at poll numbers and and keep your eye on the ball and get everything to your advantage to make sure that everybody is showing up. But no, they're not. They're going to fucking coast through this one. Mm -hmm. It's like it doesn't even fucking matter. So yeah, fine. Don't use don't use cannabis to your to your advantage. 
I mean, you want to look at some poll numbers. Look at how weed's polling. Weed's yeah. polling better than Biden ever has weed's in polling. every fucking state. Weed polls better than Biden in Texas. Weed polls better than Biden in fucking Kentucky. Weed polls better than any president ever <laughs> yes, at this point. Yes. Weed is more popular than politics. If you tell me what president has a six, has ever had a 60% approval rating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, boy, all right. Like, maybe, like, Daddy Bush during the first war yeah. for, like, a couple weeks. At the height. Yeah. At the height of our fervor where everybody was patriotic. Yeah, maybe W for, like, the week after 9-11, right? Yeah. Biden should be wearing one of those fucking tricolored beanies. That's how much he should be pushing marijuana right now. <laughs> Just give him an edible. Let him make a speech. Yeah. <laughs> I'd fucking pay to see that shit happen. Oh, well, they gave Where me, am I, man? This is a brownie. You know, I have a brownie before. <laughs> All right. Time to wrap it up then. It's cashed. Tap it out on the ashtray. It's over. Just for this week, though. Follow us on yep. social media. We'll pack up another one next week. Yeah. On Twitter, at the Weezman 420 On Facebook, you can, uh, I believe, right at the Weezman 422 Like us there. Go to ChristopherMedia.net, hit the PayPal banner, or the Amazon banner if you want to help us out. And wherever you are listening to us, rate us and review us if you have those capabilities, because that's how you help other people find out about the show. So thank you for listening, and stay high. Stay high, y'all. The Weedsman Podcast. ChristopherMedia.net.